Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and this is another way to route curved moldings. Recently, we produced a video about using templates to create curved moldings. And I like to think we took a little bit of the mystery out of what, for many woodworkers, can be an intimidating task. Today, though, we're going to take it a step further. Templates make it easy to route a profile on the edge of a curved molding, and by laminating two profiled edges together, you can create complex crown moldings. But what if you want to create a flat curved molding such as this one with a feature like a cove that's routed in the center away from either of the edges of the work pieces? For this you'll need a simple jig. I cut an arc in this piece of MDF that matches the curve of my molding. I added a cutout for my router bit and a fence along the back that I can attach to my router table's fence. Let me show you how it works. I use a core box bit to create the cove. I move the router table fence so that the jig is positioned to cut down the center of my workpiece. It's going to be critical that I keep my workpiece against the fence throughout the cut, so I'm using a feather board that attaches to the miter track in my router table. And I'm going to keep my hands well away from the bit by using a pair of push blocks that have nice grippy soles on the bottom to help me move my workpiece through the cut. I make the cut in several light passes, and even when the cove is fully formed, I take a couple of extra passes because I want to ensure that I have a clean, smooth finish. For best results, try to pause as little as possible as you push the workpiece through the bit. That's how you cut a cove down the center of a curved piece of molding. If you need to widen the cove with the second pass, it's always important to remove material using just the front of the bit. Don't plow a cove and then move your fence closer to the bit to widen your cove by removing more material with the second pass using the back of the bit. You'll be making a dangerous climb cut. The same jig can be used instead of a template to route profiles on the edges of work pieces as well. You simply move the jig forward so the bit is inside of that cutout and you'll be able to route on the outer convex curve. Remember to take light passes and a couple of extra ones to finish up. Routing on the inner concave curve is a trickier proposition though. You'll have to route with the back side of the router bit. And as I said, that can be a dangerous climb cut. To avoid climb cutting, you may reverse the direction that you feed your workpiece, moving from left to right instead of right to left. But that still traps the workpiece between the bit and the fence. Granted, the curved fence itself holds the workpiece in a way that a straight fence won't, but it just always makes me uncomfortable to put a workpiece between a router bit and any fence. So I think it's a better idea to route this inner concave curve with maybe a stick-on template method as we showed in our previous video. If you haven't watched that video, I'll put a link to it in the notes below this one. I'll also link to the feather board and push blocks that you see me using because those are some really good ones and that's just an essential safety device for a technique like this. In the meantime, be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always full of great woodworking tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com. Happy curving!